Thank you all for being here today. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation. Um, the surge of financial scams, particularly those that target our elderly and more mature population, our neighbors, our friends, our family members, it's incredibly disturbing. I mean, if you look nationwide, fraud losses have been up um, last year, I think it topped $10 billion. I mean, if you look at the state of Alabama, we were, I think, uh, defrauded out of nearly 74 million, which was up from the 55 million the year before. It, I mean, it's it's staggering. And we know with the benefits of new and more efficient uh, means of payment also come risk with criminals using these technologies to truly prey on Americans. And according to the Alabama Securities Commission, in 2016, there were actually 23 cases of elder fraud abuse. If you look back last year, there were 159 cases reported. And then if you look at this year, just in the first nine months of the fiscal year, there were already over 250 cases reported. So it's clear that we must be doing more. We must be more diligent. We must do better in educating um, our, our population, particularly the elderly population, with regards to everything from romance schemes to sweepstakes schemes to impersonations um, that ultimately uh, let them become victims. And uh, that's what we're here to talk about today. So I want to make sure that we are enabling law enforcement. I want to make sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can. And Mrs. Leibarker, I'd like to start with you. As we know, criminals are constantly adapting and finding new ways to reach and manipulate Americans out of their hard-earned dollars. Uh, they're not just scammers operating off of a computer in a basement anymore, but these are large scale operations and entire business models uh, that are actually created to defraud people. In South Carolina, how is your department keeping up with the ever-growing list of schemes being used to target the older population of Americans? And uh, what are the general themes that you are hearing for vi from victims that you speak to? Great. Thank you so much. So I think as far as how we stay ahead of things or become aware of things is the reporting. I mean, it was mentioned earlier that folks are ashamed when they become mm -hmm. victims of scams. So it's trying to get past that stigma so that they can let us know what that new scam is or what that new tactic is, the nuance. And as she just mentioned, some of them are still in denial of, uh, about, about the process right. as well. It takes a minute. So. Yes. I mean, because they'll stay on the phone with them while they go to the pharmacy store to get the gift card, to activate it mm -hmm. and all this. They, they kind of hook them in and keep them keep them in there. So the reporting is very helpful for okay. us. Then we can get it out through the media doing a scam alert or a press release to try and get as many people out there to right. know. So real quick, if you are watching this, I want all the people in Alabama to know that if you are a victim of this, we need you to report it. Step yes. one, we need you to report it. Okay, continue. They're not alone. Go, They're not alone. You're not alone. Go ahead. We're more than happy to, to walk you through that and hopefully be able, we can assist in some circumstances, especially in the area of gift cards, which is the number one way that our folks in South Carolina are making payments to scammers, is that we have contacts that we can hopefully quickly if you notify us as soon as you realize it, we may be able to get those monies back. And that's great, you. the reporting element. I had um, I had a young man that I worked with that, that had this very thing happen with gift cards. And so, the, but the reporting element, I think, is what we're missing here. So yeah. keep going. What else? And that allows us, because education, we, we say beware and share. We give the information out to the consumers, and we encourage them to share it with their family and their friends so that everybody knows what those you know, red flags are of the scam and where they can go to for those resources to spread that word because we certainly can't do it on our own. And can you tell me what type of educational outreach that you're doing there in South Carolina to, to let people know of this? Obviously, we need people to report it. Then you can, you mentioned putting, um, you know, some type of red flag out. But mm -hmm. can you tell me what else you're doing from your department to, to educate people on this? Sure. So presentations in person and webinar is our number one go-to. Okay. It's that face-to-face. -face. I mean, that's, we have our Ditch the Pitch um, Guard Against Guiding Scams. It's our number one publication that we release that kind of gives the pitch that a scammer will use and top tips on how to defend against that scam and then what to do if you do give your information to a scammer. And so us being able to get out there and spread that information is really helpful. And then the webinars too, okay. from, you know, makes it very easy for us to do that. But the partnerships really is a huge way to disseminate that information, that information and to make sure that everybody knows what everybody else is doing and where they can refer folks to. And again, get it out to the masses. Absolutely. And in my last few seconds here, uh, we're going to try to push this out to as many Alabamians as possible. Can each of you give um, a piece of advice to my constituents about how to be vigilant in this area? 
Uh, thank you. I would say first and foremost, just understand that this is a problem that affects anyone of any age and doesn't matter your education level. I think a lot of people don't think it's going to happen to them. So when you see an article in your local paper or in your ARP magazine, read it because a lot of people bypass it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. The number one thing is if you get that cold call, that email, that text, no matter how it's coming to you where somebody is asking for that personal information or that money, it's a scam. It's a scam. Don't click on it. Um, don't right. respond. Don't, it doesn't matter who they say they are. Got Cut it. off the communication. Reach out directly to who they say they are with the phone number that you know belongs. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Brett. Senator Warner of Virginia's recognized. Oh, well, um, oh. Do you mind if oh, I'm sorry. we're trying I'm sorry. to get sure. some good information? Oh, I'm sure. I, I was Thank just going to say we try to – we would really like people to already have a list available to them by their phone of um, place, people they can check with. Okay. Uh, places that they can call. So if you get a call and it's asking you for money, it's a scam. But sometimes it's hard for people to recognize that. So if you're asked to make a big decision in a very short period of time, then have n numbers of a friend. Have numbers of your local police department. Have numbers of the consumer protection agency near you. If you have those in advance, you are more likely to dial those numbers to get help than uh, before you step deeper into that scam. That is great advice. Thank you so much. I appreciate what y'all are doing.